This is my very favorite place to be in the morning. I love to sit out here in my garden, have a cup of coffee, think about all the things I've got to get done during the day, but just kind of soak in being in the garden. I love to be outside and I love to garden. Thus, I have a gardening channel. And if you're here, you want to learn about gardening too. So welcome everybody. My name is Michelle. I live in Northern Illinois, Zone 5. If you're here, it's because you want to learn about gardening. Today, we're going to do a tour of my garden. And I don't know that it's anything spectacular, but I like it. And so I thought I'd take you through, show you the good, the bad, and the ugly, uh, and the things that are wonderful too. I don't think gardening's ever done. I think that you forever are changing your garden up if you are someone that's a gardener. Now, for some people, gardening is like, oh, I don't want to do that. And that's okay too. But for me, it's not maintenance. It's gardening. I think that I'm always switching up what I'm doing because sometimes I plant something and I love it. Sometimes I plant something and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. Sometimes I plant things and they die. I mean, that happens. I'd love to say that everything I've ever planted in my whole entire life has been in the perfect spot and it's thrived and it's grown and it's done exactly what it was supposed to do. But that doesn't happen because mother nature does whatever she wants to do. Now, for the most part, the plant tags are pretty accurate. And if you plant the right plant in the right place, you know, the sun plant in the sun, the shade plant in the shade. You don't try to put a bog plant in dry shade, things like that. You're going to have good success. But, you know, you always are, at least I am, I'm always finding new things that I want to try or things that I don't have in my garden that I want to add or things in my garden that I planted and I went, ooh, that got way bigger than I thought it would and it doesn't really look right there, so I'm going to move it. And that happens. Thus, I am never done gardening. So in my garden today, as I take you around, I'm going to show you things that look great and things that don't look so great. You're going to see holes in the garden. You're going to see projects that aren't done because I'm always in the middle of two or three projects at the same time. I try to get them done by the end of the year, but I don't stress it if I don't. I, you know, I'm happy with any progress that I make. I work a lot at the garden center. So when I get time to come home and be in my garden, oh, that for me is the ultimate. I love it. So if you have not subscribed, please do so below. And if this is your first time here, Welcome, I'm so glad that you decided to join us. If you are somebody that is returning, I just wanna say thank you because you know what? When I first started this channel back in January, I was like, you know what? If I get a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, that would be so cool. But you know what? I'm over 4,000. I haven't even been doing this six months and it's all because of you guys, so thank you. I appreciate you sharing my videos, making your comments. I love to hear from you and just subscribing and you know, supporting us here. So thank you so much. So without further ado, let's start the tour. Oh, and before we go any further, I do live on a busy road where another road next to me is closed. See, listen to that. I will do my very best to try to filter out the noise from the trucks. But unfortunately, the road is like right there and sometimes there's, I catch it and sometimes I don't. So I'll try to talk loud enough that it's over the trucks and I apologize for any truck noise that I miss. The other thing is the very first tour that I did back in May, apparently I was like all over the place with the camera and I will try to move slower and I will also try not to move the camera so quickly in different directions. Okay, so with all of that, let's go ahead and get started. I can't wait to show you. Okay, so here we go. This is the approach to my house. And just to give you some perspective, this is the road and here's my driveway. This is one of the beds that I created right here to kind of just soften the look. I wanted that approach to look nicer. That used to be just grass. The other thing is this bed right here is 100% clay. I didn't do anything to amend the soil. I'm just learning how to grow in clay. So both of my beds in the front, I didn't do anything to. Now the beds that you see along the side of the house and the back of the house, I did amend uh, some of those with compost so I could grow some different things. So this bed has been here for about four years and it is a mix of plants that I started four years ago, like the magnolia here. That was the first thing I put in the bed and those sedums over here on the end. And then I had put a tiger's eye sumac in here and I pulled it out because, oh my gosh, it was so happy. It was spreading everywhere and they do grow suckers. And I knew this, but I was thinking maybe in the clay that would slow them down. No, it was like going everywhere. 
and I love the way it looked and I love the color of the plant, but I couldn't take it taking over the whole area. So I pulled it out and I've been pulling suckers for about two years now. I think this year I haven't pulled any, so hopefully I've got them all. So I kind of started over and did some different things in this bed. I keep switching it up. So there are things in this bed that I just put in last year and it's just always progressing. So here we have a Wajilia and this one here is a variegated, it is the Sunset Monet series and it's done in the really dark uh, fuchsia flowers and they're on the back end of being done. This is a rebloomer, but when it reblooms, it really is very sparse. So I don't count on it being that rebloomer, but I do love the foliage on it and I love the variegation. Now I have another one just like this in the same series, but it blooms light pink. That one is actually done already and I already cut it back. This one, after it's done blooming, I will cut it back. And then we have just some different perennials in here that are, these are what I call a summer blooming bed. This bed actually gets all of its sun between now and noon. I have a great big sugar maple right here that creates a lot of shade. And so that way is west and the sun travels over and as it goes further this way, it pushes the shade this way. So this gets all morning sun, but everything in here seems to be doing really well. I have a couple things that I'm trialing in here, so we'll see how it goes. So I have some alliums over here, some Liatris Cobolts, those are purple, some more sedum, day lilies, black eyed Susans. So those are some of the perennials that are blooming through the front of this bed right here. Then I have hostas towards the back because it's getting morning sun, but it's not really getting afternoon sun. So they're pretty protected. None of them have burned up through the season, and so I've left them. Now, the one thing I have found is even though hostas will grow in clay, I'm finding with the bigger hostas, like these three right here are the bigger cultivar of hostas, they aren't getting as big as I want them to. I think that there's, you know, competition with the maple, even though they're a little ways away, but I just don't think I give them enough water to get them as big as I want them. When you are growing big hostas, they need supplemental water to be able to get as big as you want. Now over here, this one here is a great expectation. That's this one here. This one here is a I believe it's a guacamole. I could be wrong, but I think that one's a guacamole and this one is a Francis William. And the Francis Williams I showed you at another video at my friend Fran's house, uh, where it was the sun, the shade garden turned into sun. Hers are huge compared to mine and they're about the same age. <clears throat> so she gives hers a lot more water than I do. And then I have some new hostas that I planted over here. Um, this is a coast to coast. I have a Empress Wu, the Ivory Coast. I don't remember what this one is, but I like it. <laughs> I don't remember what it is though. And then my experiment. Okay, so two years ago, Little Lime Punch was introduced as a paniculata hydrangea. They get about three by three and they're really, really nice. Now I'm trying to grow them right here. And what I did was I planted one, two, three, four, five of them right here, kind of in an arc. And then I planted the boxwoods. These are sprinters along the edge. One, I think I need another boxwood right here. I want to create a hedge here and the sprinters are going to get about three by three, four by four. So they'll create a nice little hedge. So just take them time. I don't know if these are going to get enough sun. I'm hoping that they do. Otherwise I'll have to move them, but they start out with this beautiful white flower and it ages and it kind of goes back and forth between the fruit punch look and then that green and white, uh, down the paniculata or down the panicle of the flower. So I hope that these do well. They didn't look that great at the end of last year and that's when I put them in. Uh, so we're hoping this year we'll see what they do. If they don't get any bigger or bloom, then I know I'm gonna have to move them. But we're gonna try it and see what happens. The other one I'm trying right here is a lemony lace elderberry in the clay. I don't know how well that one's gonna do either. It looked dead by the end of last year. I put it in in June of last year, it did not do well. It did come back, so we're gonna see how it does. We'll give it one more year and see if maybe it was just the whole, I gotta get used to this space kind of thing. So there's the bed. All right, then we come over here to the sidewalk that flanks the side of my house or the front of my house, depending on your perspective of that's the road out there. And these are the two pots that I did. They are sun, shade. So I did the Silverberry Super Tunia from Proven Winners. There's a two Diamond Frosty Forbias in here and then two of the Surefire Rose Begonias. So these are doing pretty good. They'll fill in this whole pot when it's all said and done. And I'll have to keep coming in here and pulling the little maple trees out because 
that's what happens when you have helicopter trees. <laughs> I do find though that if I just leave the, the helicopters alone, they don't root into the ground. It's when I start messing with them that I get trees everywhere. All right, then we've got this bed here and this bed here is three years old. It's actually going into, let's see, one, two, this is going into its third year. So we actually had a sidewalk here in a bed that was only like 18 inches wide and we ripped it out and we poured this concrete sidewalk here. It's a stamped colored sidewalk and I flank it with the four pots that I do with the coleus from Proven Winners and then I ring them with impatience. I just love those. And then I take little bowls, little low bowls and I run them in the bed and strategic places and I just fill them with impatience. Every year I do a different color scheme. This year I did what's called a Portland mix. It's a white, like an Amara purple and a pink. And so those are the colors that I chose to go down this year. Last year I did um, all purple and the year before that I did salmon. So I've liked all of those, they looked great. So as this bed ages and matures, I don't know that I'll ever add anything else to it. I like it just the way it is. So it actually is one of those beds that I'm gonna leave alone. Maybe, we'll see. <laughs> I say that and then I'll add something to it. But I do have two oak leaf hydrangeas. I have one, let's see, one right here and one right here. These cultivars are called Alice. They're just now starting to get their blooms on them. They've got the big, bold, beautiful leaves that look like oak leaves, and they turn red in the fall. These are gonna bloom. They're absolutely gorgeous. But the one downside with an oak leaf is that you can't prune it but one time, or maybe, well, let's, let's preface this by saying that they bloom on old wood or last year's wood. So if you prune it at the wrong time, you will sacrifice all your blooms. Pruning should be done after the plant has flowered and the flowers are done, if that's what you wanna do. Or if you do decide that you're gonna prune it down to the ground, you're gonna sacrifice your flowers for a year. So just know that, uh, but I love, I have four oak leaf hydrangeas, I love them. All right, then I've got some winter gem boxwoods. I don't prune them. They are going into year three, I've yet to prune them. I like them looking all woolly, like little balls. I'm not trying to grow a hedge here. So I just like the way they look. Then we have an Annabelle, not an Annabelle, uh, we have an incredible hydrangea from Proven Winners. And as you can see here, it is getting its flowers. I don't know that this will ever get as big as it could get if I gave it more sun, but it's doing pretty good there and I'm gonna leave it. We also have some Korean feather reed grass here and a June hosta. And these are not full size, but they are cute. I love the foliage on these. I just think they are so sweet. They're not a great big hosta. They're a smaller hosta, uh, but I, I really like them. Here's the other pot that we did in the window box with the uh, Diamond Frosty Forbia. Again, we used the Surefire Rose Begonias. Here's a Helichrysum, and then we used the Snow Flurry Heart to Heart Caladium. All right, this bed starting in the middle is the same as the other, except here on the corner, we do have a Patriot Hosta. And I had another one right here. I had three and two of them, I don't know, this one's like pretty pathetic. Look at that little bitty thing in there. I probably should just go get a replacement. And then I have a Purple Palace Coral Bell, which is too small for this area. I thought it would get bigger, but it's not. It's like dwarfed behind the pasta and I had another one here and it just didn't make it so okay remember I said I wasn't going to do anything I might do something right there we'll see all right and then you just come down the bed and it's kind of a repeat except for when you get right here so this is a serrata hydrangea it's a mountain hydrangea called tough stuff and it's starting to get its little flowers it's really happy here it doesn't get very big so I love that you can tuck one of these in it does want some sun and here it does get enough sun that it does well in fact sometimes it almost needs uh, me to come out and water it because it'll droop in the heat of the summer so this one's doing really well here then we've got some citronella coral bells and then we put the palace purple kind of behind them so they kind of intermingle together and I just cut all the flowers off of them because I don't grow coral bells for flowers. I just like the foliage. And so here's my look coming down this way. All right, then the other thing I have is this is a pistachio uh, smooth hydrangea and I'm gonna have to move it. He doesn't like it here. He is not getting enough sun. He's not flowering. Uh, he didn't do anything last year. It got really super small. So he will have to be moved thus Okay, I lied. I will be doing things in this bed, uh, but not very much, because I do like the way this bed looks. 
All right, here we go around to the back side of the house. All right, these are some of our super pot challenge bowls here. That's the bistro set that I got at a vintage sale. I paid $15 for that little set. I love sitting out there. All right, and then you can see here, I have another elderberry. And so this one here is doing a little bit better. I backfilled these squares here with compost. So it seems to be happier. All right, so then you come across the back here and you can see I've got my bowls here. I just love them. I've got them flanking the steps coming up. Those are my two raised beds. I've got basil in one, fennel, and calendula in another. And so this is my deck area. Now, when we moved in, this just sloped down and was grass. And there was this itty bitty skinny bed up along the deck here that was full of resurrection flowers, which I still have some coming up. And what that is, is see, they come up and they look like they've got daylily foliage on them. The foliage totally dies back and disappears. And then a single flower stalk comes up and it gets a pink flower on it that looks like a daylily. I thought I got them all, but I keep every year I keep getting them back. And so I keep uh, digging them out. So over here is my hosta bed, which stay tuned. We will be doing a video where I'm going to actually plant some other things in the shade area. And what's really cool is this is so unique back here because I used to have a tree right here that was a Crimson King maple and it died. It just... One year it didn't have great uh, leaves on it. The next year it had no leaves on it and then it was, it croaked. And so that was two years ago. We cut it down. I thought I was gonna hollow out the stump and plant something in it or do something cool with it. I have yet to do that, but you never know. It's still early in the summer. I might do something. But what's really cool is this is all sun. And then you come this way and you get shade again. So you have the, like this really cool uh, garden going on. Now this down here is not finished. I put this bottom part in last year, year before last. So, and I did add some things to it last year. This year, I'm hoping to finish it up or be close. I just keep going back and forth on what I want it to look like at the end. So I keep changing my mind. So we're gonna hopefully button that up this year and see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna go around the outside of the bed and kind of show you what I've got going on. I do have two tiered walls here. This is my herb bed here, so all my herbs are planted through here. And then down here I have some salvia, some nepeta, and here are some little um, eucalyptus. Then we've got some Japanese painted ferns. Oh, look, there's my shadow. Let's go this way. And then you come down here and we have three hostas. Just two of them are the white edged hosta and then you've got a blue cadet. All right, let's go around the other way and take a look at what's in the bed. All right, here we go. I'm coming down the hill and I planted these three viburnums here. And I told you the wrong kind the last video that I did. These are actually Mohicans. And I can always trim up the branches on this red maple uh, as these grow older. But my goal was that they would get big enough that they would create a screen here to create some privacy from the road because we're so exposed. Even though we're a little ways away, I still you know, would like a little more privacy. All right, remember that hosta that we uh, divided in the video dividing perennials? Well, here it is right here. I split it into three pieces. I was gonna put it on the other side of the house and I decided to put it here instead. So there it is in the ground doing pretty good. Those are the blue angel hostas. We have a bug bane here and then some of the Hakana Kloa. Uh, Japanese forest grass here and I'm going to plant some things in between that. Now here I did actually have to backfill with compost because they would not grow in just straight clay. So the top portion of the bed has really good soil that we backfilled with but the bottom part down here is all clay. So again another clay bed how fun. All right then we've got some beautiful Asiatic lilies over here. Aren't these great? I just love these. Look at the blooms on those. They're just so beautiful. And I have three of those. And those will actually, uh, they'll get bigger. The clumps will. They'll spread. Those bulbs will multiply. And I'm going to let them. I want them to fill that area in. Then we've got a little piglet grass right here. And then we have our three knockout roses. And I know knockouts aren't for everybody. They're kind of a shrub rose. But I need a rose that's easy to grow. Here we deal with, you know, powdery mildew, black spot, Japanese beetles. So I need easy roses to grow. I am going to uh, add a few more roses to this bed, but I do grow the easier ones. Um, I don't have time <laughs> to mess with other ones. I just think those are gorgeous. 
All right, so then as we keep going, here's my beautiful obelisk. Last year, I grew a morning glory on it. I didn't love it. Uh, I actually picked that up for 20 bucks. Yeah, at the same estate sale, or I guess antique sale that I bought that little bistro set. Uh, I just put the Boom Chocolata Geranium in here. And so this is the one that I was gonna put up front. It's hard to see here in this light, but I just think this is beautiful. I just planted it yesterday. Look at those little purple flowers on there. And this thing has got this beautiful dark foliage and it's gonna fill in this area here. And it will get, you know, this big around and fill this all in. All right, and then over here, we've got some beautiful Veronica. Look at the candles on those, aren't those beautiful? And I do wanna add some more Veronica to this area. Um, they're, loving, they're loving their life here, so I'm gonna add some more Veronica. Then over here, we've got a little Bobo Hydrangea. I've got a pink knockout rose. All right, and then I've got some alliums here, and then this is another uh, Empress Wu Hosta, which is getting way too much sun, and I'm actually gonna pick this one up, and I'm going to move it and it's gonna go way up there on the other end of the herb bed that gets all shade that I can't really plant herbs, and I need something there to fill it in, so that's where that's gonna move. This one here, I just planted this. This is, um, I just planted it. It was not doing well at the store, so sometimes I bring stuff home that's not doing well. This is called a trollis, and it's a golden queen globe flower, and it grows in part shade or full sun, and it is going to get, if I can read my tag here, 24 to 30 inches tall and 24 to 36 inches wide. So I'm hoping that this is gonna be this nice big specimen plant back here and that it's gonna grow up nice and big and tall. And then in front of that, I've got two of the Calamagratis uh, over dam grasses. And then this is the patch that was here when I moved in. So this used to be a hill that came down and then there was like this square bed down here. Uh, and it kind of outlined these hostas right here and it went down about three feet. This end was weeds, this end uh, had daffodils and the hostas in it and that was the only part of the bed that I left from uh, <laughs> the original homeowner stuff that was here. Uh, it was just this random bed plopped right in the middle of the ground and I had to mow around it all the time. All right, so this is our hosta bed here. And again, I'm gonna be upping my game over here. We've got blue angels and sagays, and we've got some rainforest. I see, uh, let's see, wide brim, June hosta, patriots, minutemen. So there's a lot of different varieties of hostas in here. Okay, up here I have another oak leaf hydrangea, and I flanked that by two wide brim hostas. And then if we come over this way, this is another bed that I'm still working on, like this part right here. I think I've buttoned up this here. I think I wanna plant a couple more things. Well, so it's not buttoned up. I do wanna plant a few more things here. Here is that other lemony lace elderberry. See, this one's planted in compost and it gets a little bit more sun in the afternoon versus in the morning. Look at it, it's twice as big as the one out front. I think I do wanna plant something taller back here, but here is a sum and substance hosta. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, and there's a little blue cadet back there. And this is where I've started some lamium ground cover. And I want this to kind of fill in this area and kind of meander through all of the different hostas in here. I do have three boxwoods here. And then I have a little coral bell that's not doing well. And I did plant a brunner over here and it croaked. I got one baby leaf left, that's it. So I don't know if he's gonna do well or not. All right, this is my chair where I planted the pot with the hellebores and the begonias. I also put a little hosta in there. And people have asked, do they still have flowers on them? And they actually do. So if you see here, see they still have their flowers on them. And I will leave that all in there until it doesn't have flowers or it's not doing well, it's stressing. I'll pull it out and plant it in the landscape. But for now, it looks good. All right, so then we come around the corner here and we have our lady's mantle, which is in bloom. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at those beautiful flowers on there. And look at how the dew drops uh, bead up on the leaf. Isn't that great? I just think that that's so beautiful. Now this plant here, I when it's done flowering, I will cut the flowers off and I will cut it in half and then it'll reflush and look great all season. Otherwise, by the time I get to the end of the season, it looks kind of ratty. Over here, we do have three astilbes. These are, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't remember what cultivar they are. And then we have two longwort. These are the Mrs. Moon, and I just finished cutting the flowers off of them. 
I do have a bleeding heart back here, another bug bane, and these can take like four to five years to get really big. But this will fill this whole area in and it'll get, you know, it's gonna get up to here. It's gonna be really big. And then it gets these white stalks on them that smell like licorice. Here we have a pink bleeding heart. This is our incredible blush hydrangea next to our black lace elderberry. Now this black lace elderberry is a beast. It will get bigger than I want it to. So I do prune this down when it's done flowering and it needs to be done fairly quickly because here it is totally growing into my oak leaf hydrangea. And this is an Alice and you can see here, it's really looking good here, but back here it's not looking so great because this is growing into it needs to be pruned. Even though it does look kind of cool intermingled like that, it's not great for the health of my oak leaf hydrangea. All right, then we've got two hostas here, some more boxwoods, and then a big hole down here where I've done nothing. All right, I'm gonna swing this around really quickly. This is all my property here, uh, my big shed. Now this is where we are gonna be doing a garden project. Uh, I did fertilize my arbovitas. I have been watering them. They're not looking that great. I'm going to give them a little bit more time, but you know, I don't know what's going on with them. I treated them the exact same as those, planted them at the same time. Not sure what happened. So this bed here is a work in progress. And as you can see, I've had to weed whack the weeds down and we're going to go through and actually spray the weeds out because you're going to do one of two things. You're either going to smother them out or you're going to spray them out. I can go through here and scrape them out. Guess what? I already did that. We already scraped these out last year. And guess what? If you don't get them down to the root and get the root out, they all come back. So you want to make sure you choose how you're going to remove weeds, whether you're going to do it chemically or non-chemically, or you're just going to pull them and deal with it. I personally don't want to pull them and deal with it because I'm too busy to do that. But what I do love is that my, my Nepeta, <laughs> ignore this great big weed right here, but my Nepeta came back really nice and so did all of the, oh my gosh, hibiscus. Those all came back. So got to do a little weeding in there. The one, I lost one denim and lace, um, Russian sage back here. And I did lose all the flocks that was in the middle, but everything else, everything else came back and is doing good. So work in progress. See, that's the part I don't want to show you <laughs> until it looks fabulous. All right, then we come over to the front bed. Again, we've got our Korean Spice Viburnum. Here's the sand cherry that we pruned. And then look at this. Oh my gosh. Give this thing some light and it was it is glorious. This is a Baptisia. This is the solar flare. Look at the glorious, just beautiful flowers on that. Isn't that great? I just love those. All right. Then we come through here and even our Coronation Gold uh, Yarrow. You got some more light. It's doing great. So it's love and life got a hosta that was hidden underneath there that is now doing better but you can tell that it's kind of bleached out a little bit because it wasn't used to getting so much sun and now it's getting sun our zagreb coreopsis is getting ready to burst so it's all loaded up with buds got one little bitty one right here that's getting ready to bloom all right and look at the paprika yarrow isn't that gorgeous that is so beautiful all right that's our limelight hydrangea I ended up putting the cannas back there. So these are the Los Angeles cannas. So those will grow and they're gonna get the purple stalks on them. This is a yellow uh, fall sunflower, a heliopsis. And then we've got some white daylilies. We pruned back the peony already. We fertilized it. Uh, that's, you really should fertilize your peony a second time. Uh, you should fertilize it when you see the little nubs come up and then you should fertilize it again after you prune it back and cut all the flowers off. So I'll just leave that for the rest of the year. It'll recharge for next year and be great. All right, we did plant our annuals back here. So those, it's, it hasn't even been a week yet. All right, so Black Eyed Susans, you can see I have not gotten around to digging those out. I do need to because what will happen is this little portion right here, I won't be able to walk through here. You won't even be able to see the path because the Black Eyed Susans will grow out and then kind of they'll cover it all up and I won't be able to go through here. So that is one chore that I do need to get done. I did get all the iris dug out though, and I will put one or two back in. I actually think I'm going to set it back a little bit further here so that it doesn't get right up on top of my beautiful weeping Norway spruce. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, but they were all right in here and I dug them all out. And now I can actually see that rock in there that I couldn't see before. 
here is our milkweed and so see it's got its little flowers on it here and this is where the caterpillars will make their chrysalis to make a monarch butterfly so we're hoping that we get some we might or might not we'll see all right then we've got the ginkgo tree here and i am hoping to make a decision on this fairly quick <laughs> i do need to probably take out either the big tall piece the miniature piece or move it uh what happened was this was supposed to be a little miniature ginkgo and then i think wherever they uh grafted it on the stock plant see i got two trunks down here i don't know if you can see that I've got one that goes here and then this one popped out and grew the big main plant that I have right now. I got a lot of suckers down here, uh, but it wasn't supposed to do that. It was supposed to just be this little miniature and it turned into a tree. So I have to decide, am I keeping it or not? I have not decided yet. I don't have the heart to cut the whole thing down. Um, it's been here for, it's like one of the first things I planted in the bed and then I kind of built everything around it. So I don't know. As you can see here, I haven't trimmed any of my user boxwoods yet. We got a window of cool weather, so I think I can go ahead and get that done. Uh, these over here, these Asiatic lilies are getting ready to burst, so that's totally awesome. And this was the other Monet series that I just trimmed it back. It was done blooming. It was fairly large, so I pruned it back so that it can get a flush of new growth on it. And then if you go down the driveway here, you can see I have the little quick fire hydrangeas there. This is me sitting in my glider. Uh-huh, this is my view. I like to sit out here in the evening because the sun is over on the other side of the house. So it's nice and shaded. It's pretty cool here. I sit in my glider or I sit in the porch. Just chill. Here's my porch area. I've got a nice uh, ruby ficus here. We grill out over there. Got my begonias. I just like to sit out here. My little collections of calatheas. So I just like to hang out, have a drink, chill. Nice breeze runs through here. Here's all the iris that I dug out. More in there than I thought. I just did this yesterday. So I've called some people to see if they want to come and get some of them. Uh, but there was more in there than I thought. Then we did this pot here that just flanks uh, the entrance to the porch. And in here we did the Vista Scarlet Mini. Uh, tunia mini petunia by proven winners we also have a cypress baby moses and then we did the marguerite potato vine see why you keep tags so i only did that one maybe maybe 10 days ago so he's still a baby okay and then the last thing i wanted to show you just give you an update on these pots that i planted as you can see here, these three pots are all planted the same. They've got the double impatient in it. It also has the baby Moses uh, cypress in the top one, but not the bottom two. It's got a diamond frosty forbia, and then it has the coleus. And this is the trailblazer glory road. So I thought I'd show you kind of how those are doing. All right, and then I have my big Sedona bowl that sits here. And this one has the bubblegum, Vista bubblegum from Proven Winners, the Bordeaux, which is here. I did the dipped in wine coleus in the center. And then look at these, I love these. This is the Proven Accent Sweet Caroline Bewitched Green with Envy from Proven Winners. It's a potato vine. I love this one. I love how big those leaves are, but this one is just doing great. I think I love the combination. And then here is the other one. This is the lemon coral sedum. And then this is the luscious berry blend lantana. These are all proven winners. And then this is the unplugged so blue salvia. I think these are glorious. Now I do think I'll end up having to probably thin out the lemon coral sedum as we go, but I love this pot too. Okay guys, I think that concludes my tour of what's going on. Uh, it is the second week in June. So as we progress, I'll try to do a July one too. Uh, everything might be looking a little more uh, in bloom then because I do have quite a few summer bloomers. I try to have stuff coming in and out of bloom all season long. Also, I'll have some things uh, and projects that will probably get done between now and then uh, that will be included in the tour. So I don't know, maybe this was not inspirational. Maybe it was, I, I hope it was, but that's my garden. And uh, I'm Michelle, thanks so much for watching. Keep on garden, we'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.